Hi guys, welcome to this short, sharp video. We're lucky to have Dr. Hussain Gandalf, the GP from Nottingham, who is all the buzz in terms of tech and helping us out in general practice from a technical point of view. So there's a really, really quick video for GP trainees, junior doctors, um, all about video consulting. A lot of you guys would have been thrown into doing video consulting in the last couple of weeks. Obviously change happens very fast at times like this. Mm -hmm. We've got lucky to get Hussain on board to come with some good tips about how to use that video consulting software and technology to help us making clinical decisions um, from miles and miles away from the patient. Hi Zane. Hi, how are we doing? Very good, very good. I'm busy as everybody is. How are you? Yeah, busy as everyone can understand with the current coronavirus situation. It's amazing how much that has shifted people thinking about video consultations as well. So really apt that we're talking about that today. And there's always been a lot of talk in the last couple of years about video consulting and how is it going to come in? How can it help? How can it change things? And now, like you said, we're kind of forced into this environment and now and we're trying to learn how to do things. So it'll be great to get you on board to give us some ideas and some tips as to how to use this medium. So I think you've got a couple of quick fire things that you can share with junior doctors and trainers alike. Yeah, definitely. So I think the first thing is when you start a video consultation is have a play with the system so that you understand how it works. Because what you don't really want to do is be looking around and trying to figuring out how to do it whilst you've got the patients, you know, on the other side of it, thinking that, oh my gosh, this person doesn't even know what they're doing. But more importantly, you're going to have some patients that are going to struggle to use a video consultation system themselves and being able to guide them through what they need to do and stuff really important to make sure that then you can have an effective consultation particularly at a time where we're trying our best to limit our contact with patients for safety reasons you know you don't want to end up having to bring a patient down just because they could have done it but they couldn't because it wasn't explained and there's some really good videos out there to try and help people i've got one myself on my platform if you guys want to have a quick look at it and more than welcome to use it and it's free to use and stuff so that's the first one. Really, really, really good tip. And if, if you don't know the system yourself and you're trying to explain to somebody how to do this and that or the other, it can get very technical and very quite complicated. So, um, yeah, really good tip. Know your system inside out. And there are a few different systems currently being used for video consultations. And there's lots of good things you can do with it. But if you don't mm -hmm. know how to do it yourself, you're not going to make the full value of the, um, of the consultation of the system itself. So a great first tip. So number two is looking at your environment and particularly lights a big thing with this. So, you know, uh, from your point of view, making sure you've got the light shining towards you, not behind you. So having a big, huge window right behind you, not going to be really helpful because then the patient won't be able to see you and that's going to impact the engagement and, and the rapport that you get with the patient. And similarly with the patient, you know, if you can't really see them because of the lighting and stuff, that's not going to make things work effectively. So maybe turning around to the patient and say, do you mind just turning? Sometimes is all they need to do. Um, or moving to a slightly different area of the room or a different room, that kind of thing, just to make the whole process a bit easier. Air conditioning is another one because that can affect the audio, which people don't always think about until they actually start and stuff. So just having a look at the environment that you're consulting in both from your side and from the patients as well. Perfect timing there. The audio went slightly funny on our side as well. So exactly a great example of if you're trying to do a consultation and the audio goes a little bit, you might mm -hmm. miss out on a really, really important key word that can change the way that you think about a particular situation. So spot on. And lighting, I guess, is really important, especially if you're trying to see things like rashes and things, then you know, that, that has to be optimum. Mm -hmm. You don't have nice bright lights that we have in a consulting room. So getting that bit right first, um, I, I think is crucial. So great second to get that lighting right from your side and from the other side as well. Yeah. Number three, same. So number three, it's dead easy to control the environment when you're a clinician doing video consultations. You know, you're in a quiet room or you may be in the clinic or even at home and stuff. That's easier to control. From the patient's perspective, that can be a bit more challenging. So just make sure the patient's somewhere safe and sensible to be talking about their health. Because when you do things like telephone consultations, it's quite easy for people to shield and stuff because they're more aware of the fact they're focused on the telephone. But with video consultations, it can be more challenging for patients to remember that they may be somewhere where it's not confidential that's not safe for them to keep talking or they may actively walk into a situation that changes that from your perspective as well so just guiding patients to say actually are you okay to keep continuing if you do move or if somebody comes in the room let me know we can pause we can you know look at how we're going to deal with this but just being aware of that thing you know I, i've had patients that wanted to do video consultations at the side of the roadside that's not going to be effective because again it affects all the stuff we just talked about like audio and that kind of stuff but also Anybody walking past them could hear what I say, what they say, and that's a confidential issue that you need to be aware of. Yeah. And that's, that's really important because you, you have control in your own consulting room, as you said, as to who's in there, what the environment is, but you have no control 
of what's happening behind somebody in their own home. So it's, 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 a, it's a really good point. And that kind of leads us on to a little bit about when we talk about consultation skills and we do loads of work around consultation skills and communication skills. Um, obviously, it's a different ball game when you're trying to show things like empathy and sensitivity and things like that, which you need as a, as a clinician when you're not in front of that person. So any tips on, on that side of things? Now, so you said this was a problem. You just cut out there for a second. Do you mind repeating what you said there for me, Alan? One of the challenges, I guess, or one of the things that we do commonly as a clinician is, is we adapt to the situation. We will show empathy, sensitivity, sympathy at times where they're needed. Obviously, much harder to do in a situation where you're yeah. not face-to-face with that person. Any, any tips or thoughts on how to, to help with those kind of things? Definitely. So that leads on to tip number four. Now, now, this is a slightly more experienced tip because you do need a little bit of awareness to do this. But rather than looking at the screen when you're doing video consultations, look at where the camera aperture is. And the reason for doing that, so throughout this call, I've been looking purely at the camera aperture. So it's kind of like I'm looking at you. The thing is, when you look at the screen, I'm going to do that now. So if I look at the screen, I'm looking at Ammon. Okay, what I can see is Ammon. Now, if, if you're looking at me, you can just see my, my gaze is slightly off, uh, less engaging to a degree. I, you know, it's, it, you, you're aware I'm not looking at you in a sense. And the best example I can give you, I guarantee you lots of people out there would have had WhatsApp video calls in the past. And as you start a video call, you put the phone down or you start doing something else or because you, you just have less of that engagement because you're not actually looking at each other. Whereas when you're doing a video call and you're looking at the camera, you're more likely to keep the patient's eye contact as a result of that. And therefore, it's a better engagement, particularly for those more, you know, the, the mental health consultations, the more em- empathic kind of consultations. It's a really good way of trying to build empathy through a technology, route, which sounds weird, but it really works. So just focusing on the video thing, tips for that, stick a little post-it behind the camera, just say, look here, you know, that's a quick one. Or my favorite one is actually have a wet, separate webcam that you stick in front of the screen so that you can do both. You can look at the patient, uh, but the webcam's in front. So it kind of looks like you're looking at the patient as well. Really works well. Obviously, that only works if you can set it up that way. If not, post it's awesome. Yeah, that's a really good tip, actually. because and, and especially if you're doing a long video consult, you know, we, we're used to things like telephone and video consults being quite short, but actually they can be quite long and sometimes mm-hmm. needed. And that's where you can forget that. You can start looking at the camera and then it all of a sudden start looking down. And, and, and you know, from the empathy and sensitivity and sympathy point of view, it, it's, it's hard anyway to put across the digital means sometimes. And these little things can make a huge, uh, huge difference. So for anyone who's, who's recorded videos, we record a lot of videos. You know, I use it in my phone because I'm recording videos. And, I, and you, you'll know the difference when I look at recorded video. I look at the camera rather than look at the screen because these mm-hmm. things make a huge difference with connection and how people feel on the other side. Definitely. And if I can give you two more tips for trainees, um, which, uh, you know, to be fair, are quite important. So pretty much the entire profession has suddenly jumped onto doing video consultations for obvious reasons when it comes to COVID and that kind of stuff. So don't feel afraid of saying that you're not sure what to do, because I can guarantee you a lot of people in your team, in your practice, will be feeling exactly the same. So having, you know, a daily or every couple of days, a, a quick debrief of how it went, what you've learned about the system and sharing that knowledge clearly from a learning perspective is great, but actually I guarantee you'll find a lot of people in the same boat as you. So learning with them will be so much more effective and useful. And then the second one, as you've seen throughout this call, you know, the Wi-Fi is a key thing that you need to be aware of. It, data connection is a massive priority when it comes to video consultations and stuff. And actually, if it does cut out, if it does fail, understanding the principles of what you need to do to then make that consultation safe again really important so do you drop down to telephone calls do you actually need to make this a face-to-face and how do you make this a face-to-face understanding that process really important because then you're not stuck thinking i don't know what to do now and then you're worried about what to do yeah super stuff super stuff and and as you said there's going to be a lot of um train i've heard from trainees recently saying i'm a bit worried about video consulting and how how do i do it and and the first answer is look go and go and tell your practice, speak to your practice, be honest and open. Say, I'm not really comfortable with this yet. Can I watch you do a few? Can I, can I learn a little bit that way? Um, because as with any podcast, if you're not comfortable yourself, if you're not feeling 100% yourself, I mean, in all aspects. Oh, you just cut off for a second. Great example of what happened. Yeah, yeah, there we are. Maybe it's a live, in, live in call. But um, yes, yeah, super tips there. I think really simple, really effective. 
it's a new world for everybody who's whole video consulting thing. Some people have been doing it for years, but the majority of people, it's a very, very new world. So I think these simple things have been really, really helpful. If then you've been awesome, it's amazing. Check out um, EGP Learning, loads of other videos on there. Stuff from general practice and, and never mm -hmm. needed it as much as they are now. So um, thanks to say for creating all those things and the platform for everyone. Have a look. Uh, we'll be doing a lot more stuff at Aurora Medical Education on terms of how to make the next two or three weeks effective, both in terms of consulting in your day-to-day -day life, but also staying on top of exams. Because I know it's a challenge at the moment. Exams are being cancelled, postponed, um, and we're doing a lot more stuff about how to help you get through those kind of times as well. But thank you so much for your time. Being awesome as usual. Cool. Catch you guys soon. See you soon. Take care.